Welcome back to Open Line tonight. Having a great conversation with Christy here. Christy Wilson, a realtor in town, about the crazy real estate market that we were in. It is hot and it is happening, no matter if you're on the seller side or buyer side. And just a lot of folks are in the market right now, creating multiple offer situations. Mm -hmm. And we used to only think about this happening in other huge markets, but it is very much a reality here. You're dealing with it every single day. Every day. So my fear, if I were buying a house right now, is when to know when it's okay to be in that type of situation and engage. A great question. And when, uh-uh, you should just walk away. Right, right. I think we've been in some situations, one of my agents was in one where there were 19 offers. <gasps> on a house and in that you unless you are going in cash mm -hmm. no contingencies you might want to walk away with 19 if it's two to five multiple offers I probably wouldn't walk away um, there, there's so many little strategies you can do talking to the other agent who's a listing agent mm -hmm. is so important knowing what the trigger points are for the seller it's not always price they may need 90 days to close or they may want to close and stay in another month after closing but really really communicating mm. our world has gotten so text and email uh, oriented yes. it's, and in real estate too nothing is more important than having a conversation with that other agent and really trying to figure out how you can position your client and and of course it's all very ethical up and up you sure, can't do anything you that's to. not legal or ethical and if you do shame on you but um, communicating to figure out how to position uh, we did a st the Tennessean did a story and they um, highlighted two of my agents who had their buyers write letters mm -hmm. to the seller we, we've we done do that, that before yeah we, I encourage in. all yeah. of my sellers to do that because it really if it's not an investment piece of property it that it gives that seller a face right and a real person and who it may remind them even of them mm -hmm. when they bought the house right, right. or they're they have a little kid like they had a little you know yeah. there's a lot of little things you can do to to make that happen okay let's talk about contingencies okay you know obviously everyone says you got to have the home inspection you have to have an appraisal right. these days um, so when you say I, I'll, I'll put in the offer without contingencies what does that really mean like what are you setting yourself up for anything at that point you know it depends on how much risk you want to take okay all right so if you put a a contract in or an offer in without a home inspection contingency which I know I rarely recommend that mm -hmm. if I'm working with an investor sure absolutely or if someone's dad is a contractor and he wants to walk through it during right. their before we write the offer yeah. and says yeah I, as a realtor I don't want that coming back on me mm -hmm. that I told you don't inspect because that's a that's a big no-no yeah. and um, so if it's a savvy buyer then I'm comfortable with them saying no inspection contingency. If I'm representing the seller and I get one with no inspection contingency, I'm doing a total happy dance. <laughs> I'm like, woo, yay! Yeah. But because um, that's typically the, right. that's the most uh, challenging contingency in the process. That and appraisals are a little tricky mm -hmm. right now. Um, but I don't recommend going in without a home inspection contingency. You just keep your eyes open is that's what is, is that what is happening in the multiple offer situations just to be more attractive you know there's a lot of appraisal waves people are waiving their appraisal contingency there um, if they're a cash buyer they're waiving the mm -hmm. financing contingency home sale contingencies uh, we'll talk about that yeah. a little bit more too no home sale contingencies um, no uh, you know come in if you're getting a loan mm -hmm. with your pre-approval letter right already if you're a strong strong buyer and you can do cash cash is king but at and the end of the day there's a lot of cash out there there's right a now. lot of cash out there wow. it sure is but at the end of the day too what the seller gets at closing is going to be all cash yes. to the seller right so a lot of times unless they have bid up the list mm -hmm. price um, the seller might not care if they're getting a loan or cash mm -hmm. if that appraisal contingency is not in there because True. they're getting the same yeah, regardless. At the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about bidding up that price. Okay. How do you know it's safe to and, and how high to go? What are you doing right. as a realtor to make sure that you're not getting people to go way above what that house is really worth? Sure. We typically put a cap on there. Say you're dealing with a $400,000 house um, and you feel like, okay, you could comfortably go up to four twenty-five. dollars and you won't be over you're still mm -hmm. paying a lot but we don't feel you're going to be upside down in the house again we don't have a crystal ball but just based on what the market's doing so if you do an escalation clause where you'll go say a thousand dollars over the best offer up to uh -huh. 425 so we cap it so it doesn't go into infinity 
on what a buyer would pay for. So you're for. not necessarily saying, mm, we're going to guess what everyone else is going to go at, we'll go at 4 or 16 and hope everyone else is less than that. You're saying, I'll go $1,000 more than anybody else. That's right. That's right. Um, and and you also, to protect your buyer, you want to see proof that there was an offer in there, that, mm. that there was another offer that they went above. Now, do comps come into play at that point, or is it just, this is the amount you're willing to pay to get that house? That, Yes, wow. <laughs> this is the amount you're willing to pay to get this house. And we as realtors, we do want to protect our buyers from overpaying because we all live that painful four years of going in and telling your seller, yes. sorry, your $400,000 house is worth three twenty. dollars yeah. And those were terrible yeah. conversations. Mm -hmm. And no one wants to go back down that path. But then at the same time, these buyers mm -hmm. want to buy the houses and and I imagine there's kind of a ripple effect that these people got 425 for their house just because somebody wanted it and was willing to pay that. The house down the street that's pretty comparable now can ask a little bit Thank more. Thank you. That's, that's exactly the argument I make. I said, you have just reset the bar in your yeah. neighborhood. And that's what happens. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're coming in as a buyer, that can just push you out of the market. That's right. That's right. And, and sadly, you know, you, if you do that, you've reset the market. And if you start waffling in the home inspection mm -hmm. on little things, and the seller knows they've got backup offers on that, yeah. and they're going to say bye bye to you because, well, I've got three more offers to choose from. It, it's a it's a fine dance because the buyers paid more, right? And you know, now like, the seller's like, well, I'm not and, doing yeah. this, and they're going, oh my gosh, I just paid twenty five thousand dollars more for your house, and you're not going to do this. Yeah. And so it, it's it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. But again, it's expectation management how much do you love the house mm -hmm. and if you're willing to let that house go let it go you don't want to have heartburn over that in three yeah. years and you're mad at the seller for not doing that repair right so you have to be <laughs> so happy our motto at the Wilson group our tagline is love where you live and at the end of the day we want all of our buyers to love where they live and do you feel like people are tending to settle right now just because the inventory is not out there I haven't had anybody settle. Good. I, I feel like everyone has been very, very excited. Um, it's sort of like a silent auction. When I go to a silent auction, <laughs> I always feel like I win. You know, even though yeah. I'm paying, right, I, I right. won. So in these multiple offer situations, they're very excited that they finally have won. And so there's a lot of satisfaction to that too. And our prayer is that this market will sustain. Mm -hmm. It won't go down. It'll sustain. How long is it taking to get to closing? Once you have the contract in hand to get that house closed, What's that timetable right now? If you're getting a loan, you are good 30 to 45 days. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's going to be the average. If you're cash, you can do it in a week or so. You know, some sellers need time to get out. Sure. E each situation is different, but I would say most closings still average at about 30 days. I know my in-laws, I was telling you, are closing on a house hopefully soon. They had a closing date, but then the appraisal got yeah. called and they said, you know what, we are backed up by two or three weeks because there's so many to do right now. That's are you right. finding that as well? We are indeed. The appraisers are backed up. If you're in this business right now, you're just busy. Yeah. And so it does make sense to give that lender a little bit more time mm -hmm. because that appraisal is out of the lender's control. Um, and if that closing date gets pushed back and it's a three or four domino closing, it's just messy. Let's talk about first time home buyers. Okay. That is such an exciting time in yeah. life to say I'm ready to purchase my first home. But being a first time home buyer can be very hard, especially in a market like this, because as we said, you're kind of getting pushed out a little bit by everyone who has cash. What are some other challenges that you find with those first timers? Um, you know, most of our first timers, they're so excited. They're so fun. They've never done this before. They sometimes don't even know what your, the electric panel is or a heat and air <laughs> sure. return. So there's no, a lot yeah. of educating. Um, they're frustrated that the multiple offer situation is in their price range, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they're excited because rent in Nashville has gone up so much, their house payment is gonna be so much less than their rent. That's crazy. So it's, it, they are being patient. They're frustrated, but they're patient. Right. And they are going to get the house that they that they want. And um, they settle, you know, I think we all do. We always do in buying a home. You know, there's a give and take yes. in everything. Yes. Can I live with this? Yes, I can. Can I improve this? Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. And. I, when it's your first home, there is just nothing more exciting, and nothing's more exciting to that buyer or to the realtor when you walk in and you have that. This yeah, is it. This, this is, is the it. House. Yeah. This so, is my house. Yes. The yes. The house. And you said a lot of first-time home buyers, or even buyers in general, think repairs that they may see along the way are going to be astronomical. And you right. Say, no, it's really not. That's right. And it, it's, again, it goes back to having a good realtor who understands how much things cost or can mm -hmm. kind of estimate that because the perception may be a $500 repair 
to a first time buyer, maybe in their mind, $5,000 repair. Right. So if you can help manage that expectation of, okay, redoing hardwood floors is not that much. Rewiring a few rooms, um, putting new countertops in, whatever they want to do is very helpful. Are there other expenses that surprise buyers in the real estate buying you know, yeah, process? Yeah, closing costs. When you're getting a loan, you have closing costs mm -hmm. associated with the purchase. And those tend to run 25 to 3%. So they're so excited that they have this down payment. And um, they're like, oh my gosh, now I have, now I have all two and a half and three percent more to right, come up with. Right. And in a in a buyer market, a lot of times we were negotiating the yes. seller to pay the closing costs, and now it's a little bit more challenging on the closing costs without increasing the price even more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but that that's typically their biggest surprise is going to be the closing costs. And I imagine another surprise for first time home buyers has to be the amount of paperwork that they have oh to my come gosh, up yes. with to yes. get that mortgage, which is a good thing. But holy moly, I think it's it's like it's, you hand over your life. Well, if someone hasn't sold a house in seven years or bought a house. I mean, even the realtor paperwork, your, the contract and disclosures are now about 23 pages, and it's just a lot. Mm -hmm. And so that trust that has to be yes. between the realtor and the buyer or seller is huge. You really want to use someone that you trust, you respect, and who you know is looking out for your best interest. Mm -hmm. If I called you today as someone new to Nashville, I think I read between 60 and 80 people move to Nashville every day. Right. 82. <sighs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's a lot of work for realtors to do right now. If I called you up and say, Christy, I'm new to the area. I need to buy a house. I got a family coming. We're changing jobs. We're headed to Nashville. Where do you start with that person? Carrie, what's most important to you? Is it your work? Is it where you go to church? Is it your kids' schools? What's, what's going to be the most important thing to you? Mm -hmm. So we start breaking it down of what, what is important to them. And if they work downtown Nashville and their job, of course their kids are important, but you know. That's right. <laughs> that goes I'm about them. And I've got a driverless car. They'll get delivered somewhere. <laughs> um, trying to find out what is what makes the most sense for them if they're commuting into Nashville and they've come from an area where they were, took a train mm -hmm. well maybe Mount Juliet is a great location so they can get on Take that train, train every day yeah. and the schools are great there they've got we we're talking about Mount Juliet yeah. you have a little bit more elbow room right. you've got great shopping you've got a lot of great stuff there and then they may say well I really heard great things about the schools in Williamson County so mm -hmm. I want to go to Williamson County well that's great but we're gonna have to tack a, another hundred thousand dollars on in right. Williamson County to what you're going to get in Wilson County. So it's really starting to educate them on the counties and then from there you can narrow it down to neighborhoods. Um, but it's really finding out what what they like. Right. Getting to know their personality a little bit. Very if good. it's a single girl who um, can afford maybe M Murfreesboro but she's going to be in downtown Nashville honky-tonking every weekend. Right. You know maybe she should buy a less expensive house in Murfreesboro at a condo in downtown. <laughs> I was like, we'll tell you too. But you know, so you really want to look at what. It just sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. But, but a good right. option. <laughs> no, good option. <laughs> I like it. Hey, we have Pat back on the line with a follow up question. Pat, good to hear from you again. How can we help you? Yes. Um, I wanted to know, I, I heard um, Ms. Wilson talk about uh, the closing costs, and I wanted to know if the seller could um, ask that all the closing costs be paid by the buyer. And the second thing I want to know, is auction a good way to sell your home? Great question. Excellent questions. So the answer to your first question, can the seller ask the buyer to pay their own closing costs or pay the seller's closing costs? The answer to that is yes. Everything in real estate is negotiable. So until you have a finalized contract, you can negotiate anything you want to. Now if a buyer comes in with a really strong offer, that's giving you what you want and the seller comes back with that, the seller may just say no, but it's all open mm -hmm. to negotiation. Okay. Um, the second thing on auctions is yes, I think auctions are another really good way to sell your home if you have a very unique property. We, um, one of my clients, uh, his mother's house was on the lake and um, she was in assisted living now and the house had sat vacant since the flood mm -hmm. for a long time and it was going to be a really hard property to get ready to go on the market most buyers retail buyers would turn their Scared home away yeah, yeah they turn their nose up at it so uh i recommended him an auction company and they got it sold one day well of course an auction is one day and he got exactly what he was hoping to get which was more than i think i could have gotten for him well why do you think that is though i think auctions um it's, it's interesting. Auctions bring in different people, people okay. looking for deals. 
come into auctions a lot of times. And this property, had it been super fixed up, was going to get more than it did, but your average buyer, like we were talking yeah. about, would walk in and go, I, I can't afford to do this. this. I can't do all this right. work. But you had a lot of investors, a lot of people who could read everything about it yes. already. The auction companies do a great job marketing what they're doing, and so and they have a following too. Mm -hmm. So that's why that worked for that. Had another one, um, it was an estate sale. I told this guy what it should sell for on the market. And if he did the work, what it should sell for. And he said, well, it's an estate. I just want to sell it as it. is. Yeah. And he was friends with an auctioneer. And the auctioneer called me and said, hey, would you want to work together? And let's do an mm -hmm. auction instead of a listing, for a, a typical listing. I said, you know, I think that's a great idea on this property because nothing had been done to this property since 1978. Wow. Okay. And, um, and, I could, and it was in a hot, hot location, mm. a very walkable location. Yeah. So I thought the property would probably sell for about 140 on a good day um, at auction. I'm like, you know, it, with the number of people there, it might sell for 160, mm -hmm. 165. It sold for 228,000. Hello, that's and a good day. Everyone was just buying. It was crazy to watch. Everyone's just buying into the frenzy yeah. of the auction, hmm. and people really wanted it. So, and that auction, you have to close within 30 days. There's no loan contingency, no inspection contingency. So those buyers who were buying, it was all cash yeah. and no appraisal. All right. Yeah. Pat, there you go. Thank you for being so with us. So unique properties, yeah. I feel like, are great for auctions. Okay. Good information. We're going to take another quick break. We're coming right back.